Hi guys, it's Shelly Penny here and I am so excited to be here. I'm just going to give everybody a minute to uh, get on and maybe while I do, I'll tell you a little bit about myself because this is my first ever uh, tutorial with Jesse James Beads and hopefully not the last. I hope you all like it a lot. Give lots of likes, feedback to uh, Sarah and let her know how much you like it at the end. Hopefully you will. Anyways, uh, as I said, I'm Shelly Penny and I live up here in in Canada on the Atlantic coast and uh, I'm a nurse by profession and I am an avid gardener and never a crafting person or a beater at all. It was never on the horizon. It was nothing I was ever interested in. And then a couple of years ago, my husband and I were strolling on the beach in Florida and I came across a shell that I, that I just thought was beautiful. And I said to my husband, you know, I could probably make some nice jewelry with this. And he um, smiled and didn't look aghast at me. Uh, and I took that as encouragement. So anyways, I, I became enamored with the rust colored um, Pantone strand that's on the Jesse James site. The colors are so rich and everything. And I was looking at that. And I was thinking that's a really nice color for fall. And I'm sure that a lot of you felt the same way, but I bet that I can summer that up a little bit with some teals or aquas that would be beautiful for a sultry summer night or something like that. So I talked to Sarah and that's what we settled on. So I'm going to be making for you the fire and rain necklace. And I think that you're just absolutely going to love it. And um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about a few things along the way that I've learned that um, make my jewelry making a little bit unique, I think, from a lot of the things that you see out there. So I'm really looking forward to it. Let's go down to the mat and we'll get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pendant. I'm going to make the uh, the uh, sides of the necklace and then I think we'll top it with some leather cord and then if we have time we'll make the bracelet too. All right I'm not going to hurry but I think we might have some time. So I've got these uh, these things here all came out of the the rust Pantone strand and then this is from the Swiss chard mix and this we're going to incorporate this I think I think I will put in a couple of cubes as well let's see now we'll put some cubes in the pendant as well we'll see how it comes together um, I have in my mind an idea of what I want to do um, but um you know, I don't really commit to something until it's all uh, tied off and looped up and everything. And even then, anything you can be cut apart can be cut apart, right? So um, I tend to, I, I don't really like to design on the fly when I'm sort of on camera under pressure. I haven't done a lot of live videos before. So um, all I'm doing right now while we're talking is I'm just work hardening the, I want my pendant to be pliable, uh, so that I can get it into the right shape, but this is a really soft wire So I just gonna I'm just gonna harden it a little bit so that once I do get it into the shape I want um, We can maintain the shape so you know the dead soft wire that you get comes um, Really soft and just manipulating a little bit um, will firm it up a little bit so you can work with it. I'm going to cut off here about um, probably about eight inches which is going to be more than we need. This is a 20 gauge silver wire and I'm going to um, put that up just sort of a bead stopper for now. Um, you guys probably want to know how much I cut off. Let me get my ruler here. All right, get the ruler here and we'll see. We've got about, well, I said eight inches. We've got about eight inches. All right, maybe a little bit more. This is way more than we need. So, uh, all right. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm just gonna string the beads in the way that I think I want them to go on and then uh, we'll take a look. I haven't quite decided yet whether I'm gonna hang the dragonfly, which you know I'm going to use in the pendant. If I'm going to hang him um, on the bottom of the pendant or I'm not sure yet. 
So let me see how I want this to, I'm just going to arrange my beads a little bit here to see. I think, let's see if we have this on one end, making sure you guys can still see what I'm doing here. We have, I think we'll put this on one end, put those, one of those, uh, maybe a couple of those, and then we'll repeat on the other side. That looks good to me. I might use a couple of these um, Palmer clay in between my crystals like that. All right, let's see how that looks when we get it on the wire. So right now I'm just going to string the, I'm just going to string the beads on and then I will um, put it into the shape that I want and then we'll go from there. All right. So here's the thing. I love to make my own pendants and I think that um, pendants, you know, a lot of people get a, a little bit intimidated by working with wire. And the thing about wire is it's relatively inexpensive. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that if you, uh, you know, it, it's well worth your time uh, to experiment a little bit with with wiring because you can do so much with it. You can make your own findings. You can um, make your own pendants, which I, is something I love to do. Um, one of the things that will stand your jewelry apart when you're making jewelry is are the components that you make yourself. So I think whenever you can make a component yourself, you should. Now don't get me wrong, I love simple stringing. Um, I just took my mag eyes off for a second and if you see me struggling to find the hole, that's why. I generally um, use mag eyes when I'm working, but I also am not used to really working at a desk. So here's what we've got so far. Um, one of the things that I felt with this mix, and, and I love, um, you know, the way that teal and aqua and greens will, will um, bring uh, rust from fall into summer, right? So on its own, rust l reminds you of autumn leaves and everything, but when you add it to teal in some of these metals, um, it, to, to my mind, it brings me to an ocean sunset. And um, I tend to, when I'm designing, um, I listened to Andrew Thornton one time and he said that he doesn't uh, see, when we're talking about metals and stuff, he doesn't see, um, the metal necessarily he sees the color and I'm a little bit like that I do um, tend to ignore the fact that we're using mixed metals right with the brass and the silver and we've got some antique copper here um, but I so I so I don't really look at the fact that we're using different metals I I see the colors and how they all go together and then I also um, tend to go by feel and I don't mean tactile I don't mean by touching something I mean by how it makes me feel emotionally and I can tell you that rust colors and teals and aquas together make me happy it reminds me of all of the beautiful summer nights watching the sunset out in the river and with a bonfire um, you know what I mean it's just like oh that makes me really happy. So I get talking and I sort of forgot what I was doing here, stringing, making a pendant. Okay, so there's lots of ways that you can make a pendant, but uh, you know, my the, my favorite and I think one of the easiest is just to string beads and make a circle or a semicircle. So that is what we're going to do. And then I'll decide whether I'm gonna hang that beautiful dragonfly inside the semicircle or outside the semicircle. Um, if I'm gonna suspend it, on the inside or if I'm gonna hang it at the bottom. I, I could hang it from right here, but once I get it shaped, then I will uh, know what I'm gonna do. All right, so I love how that looks. And uh, yeah, it just reminds me of the sunset. So I'm going to start tr bringing this up uh, into a circle, into a semicircle. Look how beautiful that is. 
together when it starts to come together like that just absolutely gorgeous um, I think before I go much further I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put a loop on it I have to decide how I want my loop to go I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a semicircle put some loops here and then I'm going to um, put a ring up here to attach it to. So that means my, if my ring's going this way, that means my loops are gonna to have to go this way, all right? So I think I'm going to do that right now before I get too carried away with the, with the shape of things, all right? And I think I'm just gonna do a simple loop. It's the easiest for me. So I'm just gonna bend that down like that and I'm not going to get too uh, excited about the loop right now I'm just going to I'm just going to form it right now really um, so you saw what I did there it's off pointed off to the side a little bit that's all right I'm going to straighten it when we go the reason I'm doing this now is because I want to make sure I get the shape right Uh, this this shape here right and I can't really get the shape that I want for sure set in stone until I uh, have the loops there so um, what I what I did on that side was I just um, took my pliers and bent it back that way okay uh, at a 90 degree angle just the same as any um, any uh, open loop all right and then uh, take that it doesn't really matter if the loops on the outside or the inside this is my um, non-dominant hands so I'm just going to bring that around and for now I'm just gonna let it hang out there while I decide what I'm going to do with the rest of it all right so I'm not going to cut the ends off just yet there I'm liking that and the reason you form it really carefully is I don't want it to get too tight in here and crack one of my beads and that can happen look how beautiful that pendant's going to be can you guys see that oops this way look at how beautiful that's going to be just lovely all right so okay so the next thing I'm going to do is make a a loop here to, to suspend this from. I could have used a hoop, but I think I'm going to hang that dragonfly on the inside. What do you think, guys? If I did this and I hang that dragonfly right in there, see how beautiful that's going to be? I don't know if you can see that or not. Sure you can. Look how beautiful that is. That's what we're going to do. All right. So what I need is I need... Um, something here to attach these two but I also need something to hang the dragonfly from I could use a jump ring but we need the dragonfly hanging in this direction I think I can do this all in one piece and again you know when I talk about making your own components this is another thing um, I could use uh, just like a, an earring hoop or some kind of a ring like that and um, I could make and just use a jump ring right but I love making my own components so I've got a piece of wire here let me just see how long that is it's about well it looks like we got about five inches five five and a quarter inches or thereabouts all right um, again we're not going to use that all I have a mandrel here you can use um, you know whatever you have that's round that'll make the shape if you have a regular mandrel these wooden dowels are great for uh, making shapes so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a closed loop wrapped partially wrapped loop is what I'm going to do all right so I've got this at a 45 or at a sorry a 90 degree angle I just made the loop there um, now I'm going to take this around here like this and just form it around so I've got my hoop here all right so what's going to happen is 
This part here is going to wrap around just like any other wrap loop um, around the bottom of that. And this is going to form my little loop to suspend my dragonfly off of, all right? So here's what I want to do. I want to take this, I'm holding it this way with both my fingers and I'm holding it tight. And then I'm going to just take it around here, all right? I'm going to take it around here and I'm going to get my tools involved here in a second, but you see, I just got it around there. Now I'm gonna tighten this up and I leave it right on the mandrel because now I don't have to worry about shape, right? It's gonna keep the shape I want. I can tighten it up really good and tight. I'm only making a single circle and I'm taking my pliers there to tighten it, all right? So it comes around, around here like this. And I'm gonna cut this part all off, all right? Um, and then we can reshape it at the end, but see what it's going to look like when I take it off of here is going to be good and round, just about the shape that I want it to be, just about the size that I want it to be. All right, so I'm going to come in here right now and just snip that for now. So there's what I've got. All right, now I can take this off of here. I can bend it back that way a little bit and I can make a little loop, and I'm not going to make this a closed loop, I'm gonna make it like an open jump ring kind of idea. I'm not gonna make it a wrap loop, is what I mean to say. So I'm just gonna come around like this. Um, we're going to go up here and then straighten that up like so. I'm gonna trim the tail. Alrighty, that looks good. And here we go. That's that's pretty good right there. All right. I'm not real happy with that here, but you know what? I'm also a believer that um, imperfections add to the charm of the piece. <laughs> and so that's the excuse I use whenever I'm making something and it doesn't come out exactly exactly the way I want because I can be a perfectionist. Um, and so a friend of mine always used to say that, um, perfect is the enemy of good. If you're always striving for per perfection, you never get there anyway. So, um, accept that some things have little flaws in them and that's okay. There, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there we go. All right. So because my loop's going to be hanging this way, and my dragonfly, I want him to hang the same way. I'm going to take this little guy like this and get my pliers right in here. And I'm going to turn in the direction of the wrap. All right, so this is the wrap this way. And I'm gonna turn in the direction of the wrap, 45 degrees, so I don't undo the wrap, but I have Mr. Dragonfly pointing in the right direction. All right, so now here's what we've got. All right, um, I want to, I'm going to tighten this up a little bit because I don't want a lot of space here. So I'm going to actually turn these into loops. And then I'll show you how I want them to face. I actually think I probably need to cut a little bit off more off of here like this because I want this to be, um, as I said before, I want it to be snug, but I certainly don't want to um, break I certainly don't want to uh, break these beautiful glass beads. All right, so let's get this off. All right, now 
the way these guys have to go is facing each other and then turned upwards just slightly all right so that's what we're going for let's see if we can get this together and looking okay actually I think I'm wrong we're gonna to have to point them towards the loop a little bit we'll see so that can hang in there like that all right open this guy put him in and So making your own components, you know, it can be it can be fussy, right? You can fool around with it until you get it just the way you want it. Um, but it's just so worth it in the long run. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's one of the things that will stand your work apart, right? Now, I promised myself I was not going to um, fuss with this over and over again, that, that it was going to be, you know, like I said, perfect, good, all that kind of stuff. So, let's see if we can get it, if we can get it in here now. All right, I'm just going to close this, close this guy up. And there we go. Oh, let's see how he hangs there. There, look. Look at and see how he hangs perfectly. Right there where I want him to hang. Right in the middle. What do you think, guys? Here's the pendant. All right. Let's make this guy something to hang him on. Doesn't that just look beautiful? Oh! <gasps> Okay, I love those colors so much together. All right, I digress. Okay, so how we're going to make the rest of the necklace, I think here's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm going to, you know, see I've got these, um, I got some head pins out and some eye pins so that we can um, make our necklace. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put some components up like this. I'm going to mix a little bit of the Swiss chard in with the rust. I'm going to um, put these guys on and I'm going to just start making links with my guys here. All right. So, you've probably seen people do links a hundred times. I'm not going to do closed links. They're all going to be, I'm not going to do wrapped loops, let me say. They're just going to be uh, regular loops. And um, I will make my loops probably a little bit bigger on one side than the other. And that's because, you know, when I'm attaching them, I like to have a little bit more room. So, I think as long as I do them uniformly, a little small loop down here big one up here. I think we're good. Not big, but. All right. So the way I do my loops is I just, uh, I just bring it to there and then I cut. Some people will bend it over and then cut and then loop it, but I feel like I can be a little bit more precise. And then I just sort of, I always sort of cut it on an angle like that so it will fit uh, up against itself. So sorry guys, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm trying to be over cautious because I don't want to make a mistake on video <laughs> on my first time. I want you to guys, I want you guys to go, wow, <laughs> she did a great job. Uh, all right. So now I'm just going to I'm just going to make some links. That's what I'm going to do. All right. I'm mixing in some of the rust with some of the um with uh some of the 
Swiss chard mix. And you know, I find that um, there are some colors that you have to be a little bit more precise with when you're mixing. Um, because we've got some dark, some more, some of the mix tends more towards green, some of the mix tends more towards um, the aqua. So I, I was a little bit more um, strategic, let's say, when I was choosing my, uh, the bead combinations that I put together. And so I sort of wanted, I, I like balance in my design and I sort of want them to really go together nicely. So I think I'm going to use this one. I think I, I brought in some of, from my own stash. I brought in some spacers and stuff just in case I might need them. And I think I'm going to um, use, uh, here's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to, because we're mixing up the, the colors of metals, I'm going to put a silver spacer right up next to here. And then I'm going to put this daisy spacer here, just to add a little bit of interest to this link. And then I'm going to use maybe, what do you think guys? I think, oh yeah, I like that. That looks really nice together. So, so we're adding some interest here in the dimension. Uh, not just in the color choice, but also in the choice of spacing um, to, to give it a really unique look to it. Very regal. To me, that looks very regal. Um, and I'm not going to have to cut too, too much off of here, I think. I'll fix up all of my loops when I go to join them too. Sometimes I just leave them like that because they're going to get they're going to get fixed up at the end anyways. Um, all right, so we'll do the same thing to this guy. We took oh, eye pin. There we go. The eye pin. Put it on here, and then we took a daisy spacer. So we've got the silver spacer right up next to the antique copper. And then we'll take the antique copper spacer. And then we'll take, I have my mix right off to the side here. So I think we'll use, maybe you wanna see how I'm choosing my uh, beads. I'm literally just sort of pawing through them. You can see that until I find the one that I think I want in the shape that I want. I really love that. I really love that. Oops. There we go. I love it so much. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I really, really love this combination of shape. Um, it makes me feel happy. Alrighty. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right. All right, so we'll continue with this. I think I'm only doing um, three links, maybe, and then we'll go to uh, and then we'll go to the leather. I think that's what because I don't want this to be a super long necklace either. I sort of want it to hang um, midway between collarbone. Midway between collarbone and chest. Sometimes, um, you know, when you when you're making your links and you do this, this is good for a wrap link, right? For a wrap loop. But I'm not doing wrap loops, so I'm going to go back up here and show you. I've been talking and kind of forgetting what I'm doing, so I'm just going to straighten this out a little bit here. Sometimes, and I think I don't remember uh, who showed me this, but sometimes it's better to just sort of pinch it over so that you're getting a little bit closer here. It might have been Candy 
that might have been Candy Cooper who, who does that little trick there, just to sort of pinch it over um, rather than bend it over the end of the needle nose and you can get closer to the bead that you're wrapping it with. All right, so we've got two. Let's go with one more. Um, all right, I like, I think we'll use, I think we'll go with this one. And the reason I'm gonna go with this one is because it matches much more nicely with the, with the bead caps here. Either one would be beautiful, but I think I like the, those ones the best. So let's do that. So I'm going to use that and I want something to go with it that looks like the rest. I think this will be, I think that's a nice combination there. All right. So same as before, let me get my eye pin. I'm not going to put spacers in between this guy. You know, these are surprisingly heavy. There's a very, it's a high quality, um, piece there. It's not just a little thin aluminum piece. That's a substantial uh, ball right there. I like that. So we went upside down with these. I think I'm going to go uh, right side up this time. Chubby end at the bottom. I like that. Um, all right. So let me show you what, what I meant about pinching so now that I've got a straight head pin here, a straight eye pin. So first of all, I'll just keep my thumb here to keep that right up down, right down to the end. And then I just take it here as close as I can and tilt my pliers a little tiny bit and then just pinch it and then readjust and pinch it. Do you see what I'm saying there? Hopefully, oh, maybe I was doing that out of the camera. Gee whiz. I hope I wasn't. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going right up here like this and pinching it like that. I sure hope that I wasn't out of the camera for most of my tutorial. That's going to upset me too. <laughs> I take it all apart and do it over again. All right. I don't think I was. You guys let me know if I was. One of the things I found when I first started making jewelry was I just rushed everything. Um, and then I started watching tutorials and I saw how much care all of the designers take. If you watch, if you watch Candy Cooper, if you watch Abby Berta, um, if you watch Jill McKay, um, Neely even, all those people, um, everything, every movement is very precise. And when I noticed that I was rushing my jewelry making, not taking my time and enjoying it, but just sort of almost rushing to get it finished, um, when I slowed down, I realized that my um, everything just looked so much better when I just took a few extra seconds. It don't, doesn't take that much longer to take a little bit of extra care. Um, so... Let me see now. I'm looking for that other guy. Oh, there he is. Um, so I just found that um, I just, you know, I just take a little bit more um, care now. I try and be very precise with my movements uh, because the quality of the jewelry that I'm making is much better when I take the time. Now here, I'm going to try and get in the camera here so you can see. I just put my that end of the needle nose up against it and tilt it a little bit in the direction that I want to go. And then I just pinch with that one. And you see how it's there's not as much space between. So that makes my uh, loop a little bit neater. My non-wrapped loop. I'm going to cut right there. So I'm not real consistent, am I, with how I do things, but, um, I, 
you know, I, I'm not sure why I choose one way or the other now, but I do know why I like to um, cut after I form the loop because I cut it too short just now. And now I have a smaller loop, but that's all right. We talked about that perfection. Now let's put, let's join these together. I am going to start opening loops. Now this is, this is the one where I did the bigger loop on the bottom and I want the bigger loop to go down here around this. We'll start. Um, but so actually I think I'm going to uh, put the chain together first and then I had to put my mag eyes on for this and it didn't help did I because I'm opening the wrong side. <laughs> Oh dear. All right. There we go. Let's see if we can get in there with this. Oh, might have to open it a little bit more. All right. Hang on. Zip. Open. Open sesame. And that one's closed. Good. All right, same thing here. Oh yeah, this was the loop that was a little bit wonky. See, as I said at the beginning, I'm not gonna represent myself as an expert of anything, but there are some things that um, that I do that make my jewelry a little bit more unique than uh, a lot of the jewelry that people are putting out there. And I don't just mean, I, I'm not referring to the designers that we see all the time either. I'm mostly thinking about, um, you know, just, just anybody on Etsy or whatever. There's a lot of jewelry on Etsy that looks the same. And um, I like, I prefer to wear jewelry that is uh, unique and I prefer to make jewelry that is unique and that to me is one of the only ways that you're going to um, oh I didn't even close that one there that's that's one of the only ways that you're going to sort of stand out and um, you know then you can really call yourself an artisan you're not just uh, copying what other people are doing. You're sort of uh, leaving your own mark. I love some of the stuff that Randy does. Um, her stuff is very um, unique and different. She uses elements in unexpected ways and that's another way that you can um, you know sort of stand apart from the crowd is to use elements in unexpected ways and to make your own components of course. All right, so we're going to attach the pendant now. And then we'll see how, how we like that. All right. Let's see what we got. Here we go. Oh, there we go, guys. What do you think of that? Isn't that nice? All right. So now I had to decide uh, what I wanted to do up here. Um, I did get from Jesse James, I did get some uh, chain. Um, this is the, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a multi-circle chain. Um, and for, for the design that I'm doing, I, I was going to sort of put it here, but I wasn't real crazy about that look um, and, how, and how it hangs. So instead, what I did was I just took a couple of the loops out and I think I'm going to use those. Now I am going to use jump rings for these. So 
So if I want the to get the right size of jumper in here, um, just because these uh, these loops are a little bit thicker than the than the loop I made or the loop at the top of that eye pin, so uh, I like it to be able to sort of hang free a little bit too. So let's see. How this looks. Yeah, I like that. All right. Okie dokie. fuzz all over everything working on these I like these uh, little felt pads so my beads don't roll around all over the place but I do end up with fuzzies on everything I have a cat too so I also end up with cat hair on everything that's the way it is when you're a pet owner right <laughs> actually the name of my business is uh, twisted fish artists and jewelry you know right when I first started uh, making jewelry it didn't take too long before I realized I didn't need 400 bracelets uh, and I was if I wanted to continue making jewelry I better find a way to offload so I decided to see if I could start selling and I started selling at uh, farmers markets I'm just going to straighten this up here a little bit he got a little bit out of the way so I started selling at the farmers market I was only you know making jewelry for two or three months and then um and then I uh, was approached by somebody who wanted to put my jewelry in her store. We have a local little artisan um, consignment shop here in our town. So I started putting my things in there and then it just kind of ballooned. I still don't really know what I want to be when my jewelry business grows up. But anyway, the reason I was telling you about that, what brought it to mind was my cat, because when I was trying to come up with a name for my business, um, my cat's name is Fish, and it's spelled the P-H, so it's uh, so it's kind of an ironic twist. Um, my husband and I were boating a lot, and he said we should call him Fish Bait, and because my job is online, I said, you know, I'm not going to do that to him. Poor guy, he'll end up with a complex, but I'll call him Fish. I don't want him to think we didn't want him right from the beginning. <laughs> so we call them fish with a PH uh, because I work online and fishing is a sort of a technical, you know, it's an internet term. Um, so, so then he, when I first started making jewelry, he was fascinated with the beads and the wire and everything like that. Um, so I decided to name the business after him. So my jewelry business is called Twisted Fish Artisan Jewelry. Um, so, okay. That was a, that was a digression. Um, I'm going to finish up the necklace up here. Okay, so I have some one millimeter leather cord here, and I cut two pieces, and I'm going to um, have a multi-strand thing. So I'm just going to tell you how much I cut here. Uh, I got twelve. 24 probably two and a half feet oh two feet and ten inches about all right 34 inches of leather so what I'm gonna do is let me see now I have these uh, ends for leather little uh, these little crimp ends so I you know I like these these ones are a little bit different than some of them. These these are round, but you can crimp them. So if you have the right size of cord, you can. It, it doesn't need a whole lot of crimp, right? You can just put your cord in there and uh, close up the circle. But if you're using um, smaller rounds of leather, you can still use these. I'm going to show you how I do that. They're really cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quadruple. So I'm going to half it, 
and then I'm going to half it again and then on this end so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, make sure we've got it in fours here and then I'm going to do a half hitch which is also called a uh, lark's head knot I believe somebody told me um, so my pendant is this way so I want to go with those loops in behind oh no I'm lying I want to go in from the front because I want uh, I'll show you I'm going to go in from the front here D -d -d -d. would help if my nails weren't so long wouldn't it life would be a lot easier but not nearly as beautiful huh. sometimes you got to put up with the inconvenience all right so here we go I got that hanging in the right direction I'm going to go through the front and then we're going to pull this through and we're going to do our half hitch here just tighten it up here make sure everything is laying straight and flat not twisted like I've got it And then just all right that's how that's gonna look I might we'll see when it's uh, when it's finished so I have the same on the other side I have the exact same length on the other side of the leather so I'm going to Double it up like that. We're gonna go. Oh, I got it twisted here. So that's what I did last time. I had it twisted a little bit. Twisted. All right. There we go. So I'm gonna go through the front. And then we're gonna pull it through here to form that half hitch right here pretty huh now we're gonna come up here and I'm not gonna trim just yet I'll just leave those together I'll get my little uh, That works out a lot better actually and then that gives me some uh, to grip on up here right and then we'll trim it afterwards all right so we're gonna do that and uh, this is one of those things where you may want to put a little glue on it right to make sure that it holds um, and you know I'm a fan of using glue with leather because I feel like there's lots of times that leather doesn't always hold a knot or you know what I'm saying right so let's try this again we're gonna crimp it on one side first so usually just start to work that in one side and then get right up here and give it a good squeeze all right now I'm going to go switch hands, crimp that side, and then I'm going to give it a good squeeze. I'm really giving it a good squeeze, you can see here, right? Just to make sure it's down there good. Good. And then I come up here one by one right down in there and trim all 
I like these. Uh, they're, you know, you've got those little, those leather little square ones that sort of look like uh, cup chain ends. And I find that those ones um, don't don't stay as nice as this. Like this one crimps pretty decently, right? It looks fairly nice when you're done crimping it. So, okay, that's that side. We'll get another little guy out. I really do like these better though, I have to say, even though um, I'm still uh, in kindergarten with them, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> while I'm going. All right, so let's try this again. We're gonna pinch him down a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna come in like this and okay. And then I'm gonna pinch the other side down Good firm squeeze to make sure that all those leather pieces are secure. And then we're going to cut. Try not to cut off the ring there. All right. Trim that up. Okay. Now my little pieces of leather here out of the way. So the last thing we need to do is to put our toggle on. I have um, some nice little toggles here. Just need some jump rings. All right. So. What I'm going to use for the jump rings, use two jump rings so this guy can fit through here, and I'll use one jump ring on the other end. Um, I'm going to get three. So I'll get one more of these guys. There we go. All right, we'll start with this guy. I'm still going to complain about my eyes. I'll get used to it. All right. There's one side. I love these toggles. And then we'll put a jump ring. Put a jump ring on this guy first. You know, I bet we took an hour to make that. I think I'm not going to have time to do the bracelet today. I was over ambitious with my timing, I think. <clears throat> Oh, I'm putting that on and I shouldn't be. Oops. I forgot I was going to put two jump rings on. I'm just going to flatten these with my pliers. There we go.
There we go. We're finished. I'm going to take this guy aside, move my tray aside here for a second. And just show you what we've got here. I'm going to take him up to the um, bust afterwards and show you. But there he is. There's our fire and rain necklace. What do you think? Give me lots of likes. Hit the like button if you think that's cool. And um, all of these components you can get at Jesse James Beads. It's a one millimeter leather. We've got the uh, multi-circle chain components here. We have the Swiss chard and the rust Pantone components. And we made our own ring there and our own links. So there you go. I hope you enjoy the tutorial, guys. I am going to add, as an extra, I'm going to make that bracelet to match. And uh, I'll put out an extra video showing you how to do that. It's real simple. And I think you'll love it, too. Y'all have a great day. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing it. Talk to you soon.